Our algebra class is known as a function-based algebra class. That's because we design the whole year around this concept known as a function. And today I'm going to define what a function is. And you've actually been working with functions. A sequence is a type of function. Those graphs that you uh, had to make with the big graphs activity is a type of function. Uh, are types of functions. So let's um, start to define function. Now in order to define function, I have to actually define three words first. The first word I'm going to define is relation. And in mathematics, a relation is any set of ordered pairs. So I can just randomly come up with a set of ordered pairs. So I'm going to open up my braces to indicate that I have a set of items. And I'm going to just list out some ordered pairs, like 4, 7, and 6, 12, and I don't know, 9, 50. These three points make a relation. Now, there doesn't necessarily have to be a pattern or a rule that turns the x into a y for it to be a relation. It's literally just a set of ordered pairs. Now, most of the relations we study are going to have some kind of rule that turns the x into the y, but it's not required to be a relation. Circles that are plotted in a plane or graphed in a plane are relations. The lines you put in a coordinate plane are relations. I showed you a hyperbola once, and that's a relation. A parabola is a relation. Or just some random scattering of points in an order in a coordinate system. That's a relation, okay? It's a very broad concept. Now, uh, part of the relation is something called a domain. And the domain is the set of all x values of a relation. And in, in the context of a function, we're going to refer to them as input. And so I can write the domain of this relation here by simply listing out all of the x values in the ordered pairs. So 4, 6, and 9 is the domain of this relation. Now, if I had a repeated uh, x value somewhere, like I had 4, 7, and maybe like 4, 5, I wouldn't put two fours here. I only put it in once. So any repeated numbers don't get repeated in the set. And they don't actually have to be in order, because sets by definition are unordered. But it's in, for ease of grading later on, I'm going to you know, put everything in order. Now, another word I need is range. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I already have a definition of range. I have a definition from statistics that say the range is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value in a, in a data set. But that's statistics range. We're looking at algebra range. And so and when I ask or talk about range in Algebra 1, I don't want you to subtract the highest and lowest values. That's not what a range is. A range for algebra is a set of all y values of a relation. And we consider those in terms of function as an output value. And so I can write the range of this set of uh, of this relation here, which is all the y values, so 7, 12, and 50. And like the domain, they don't have to be ordered because it's a set, sets are unordered, and I don't put repeated values in here. If a number shows up twice in the range, I only list it once. And so my range is simply 7, 12, and 50. So with these three words, combine them together, I can get the definition of a function. Now here's what a function is. And we're going to interpret it after I read it, okay, into a more you know, friendly language. So a relation, a function, is a relation, so it's a set of ordered pairs, where each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Okay? So what a function is, it's a set of ordered pairs, and it could be a finite set like the one I showed before that has only a small number of things, or it could be you know, like a, a graph of a line or something, where each member of the domain, this means each x value. And when I say corresponds to, I mean matches to exactly one member of the range. So that means each x value corresponds to one y value. So exactly one y value. Now, functions are oftentimes described as little number machines. And what you do is the function has like maybe an equation or a little rule that turns the input into the output. And if you think of it as a, as a little number machine, if you were to put something into a machine and the machine does stuff to the thing, you're only going to get one output. You're not going to get like multiple things out with the same rule. So they like to think of a function as a little number machine where one you have one output for each input. So if you think of an equation, you plug like an x into an equation, you're not going to get two different y values. You get one y value. And that's the key to a function, okay? That each input has only one output, and it's exactly one output. 
So let's look at ways that you can represent functions and see if we can see if something's a function or not just by the various representations. So there are five ways to view a function. Okay, you can see it as an equation, and the equations are very specific. They have to be y equals something in terms of x. And you don't do anything to the y, like you don't square it, like x squared plus y squared is not a function. Uh, you can see them in tables, you can see them in graphs, you can see them in something called a mapping diagram, or you can just see them as a list of points like I showed before. So for the equation, they're usually going to be y equals some expression of x. So for example, like y equals x, or y equals x squared plus 4. What you don't see are something like x squared plus y squared equals 5. You don't do stuff to the y in a function, okay? So like x squared plus y squared equals 4 is not a function, okay? Now, a table is just a listing of the points, so a table and a set of points are basically the same thing. They're just written in a different way. Now, for the graph, we have actually something very specific we can use to test if a function, or if a graph is a function or not, and it's called the vertical line test, and it has to pass the vertical line test. That means that if I can draw a vertical line on the graph, and that line, that vertical line, hits the graph more than once, it is not a function. Because if you think about what a vertical line is, the vertical line is the x value. And if my graph hits my x value in two spots, that means I had two outputs for that one input. So for example, if I just sketch the graph of just some generic line, that's a function. That's fine. If I graph just some parabola, that's a function. If I turn my parabola sideways, this is not a function because if I can draw a vertical line, I hit the graph twice, that one x value has two y values, so this is not a function, okay? Same thing with the circle. A circle's not gonna be a function because I can draw a line, a vertical line, and hit the circle more than once. Now, let's look at these other three, table, set of points, and a mapping diagram. These require a little bit more analysis. Like for the equation, you just have to look for y equals something in terms of x, nothing done to the y, like no square roots of y, no y squares, no y cubes, nothing like that. Um, and then for the graph, it has to pass a vertical line test, meaning I can draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph, and that vertical line is only gonna hit the graph once. And if it hits it more than once anywhere, it is not a function. So let's look at these other three. So let's start off with the set of points. And I'm actually going to turn the set of points into a mapping diagram just to see if it's a, a function. And I'll explain the, these two together. So let's look at this example. And I want to know if this set of ordered pairs is a function or not. Okay, so it's a very limited one. It's not an infinite one. Like these are considered infinite ones. These have like infinitely many points because I can put anything I want for x and anything I want for y. And this thing goes on forever. But this is like a finite little set. And I want to see if this relation is a function. So this is a set of points. You're going to see it written in the curly Q braces of a set, and you're going to see the points listed out in the ordered pair with parentheses. Now, I'm going to convert this thing to a mapping diagram. So here's how mapping diagrams work. You're going to make an oval that's going to represent all of the x values. And then you're going to make an oval that's going to represent all of the y values. And in the oval for the x, you're going to list out the domain members. So 1, 2, and 3. And in the y, you're going to list out the y values, 4, 8, and 12. And it's called a mapping diagram because you're going to use arrows to show what y each x maps to. So x here, 1, maps to 4, 2 maps to 8, and 3 maps to 12. So this is a mapping diagram. And I have to use arrows because the arrows make a difference in math, in the direction of the arrows make a difference. This one becomes that one, so this is where the arrowhead goes. Okay, So this is a mapping diagram, and the test is, for a function, each x has exactly one y. So I don't see multiple arrows going from any of the x's, so this is a function. And so using a mapping diagram, I can tell if something's a function. So if I'm given a mapping diagram, I can quickly tell if something's a function. That's the kind of the point of the mapping diagram. Okay, so let's look at a table, and let's make a mapping diagram of the table to see if it's a function. And I'm purposely going to choose something, a table, that's not a function, so you can see the difference in the mapping diagram. All right, so I have a table, and once again, I'm going to use a very small set of numbers, because I'm just trying to show you how this works, 
Um, and so I don't need to use like a huge example. So I'm going to use a very simple table that just has 1, 4, 2, 8, and 1, 5. Okay, so I'm going to turn this into a mapping diagram. I have my oval of x's, I have my oval of y's. And I only list values out once. So I have a 1 and I have a 2. Now I'm not going to write this one again because it's already there. That defeats the purpose of the mapping diagram. It's just like if I wrote it in a set, I'd only write it once. So I'm not going to repeat a 1. And then in the y oval, I'm going to write 4, 8, and 5. So now I'm going to show what maps to what, or what, map, what becomes what. So this 1 became a 4, this 2 becomes an 8, and this 1, oh wait a minute, it also became the 5. And it's this thing right here. The fact that 1 maps to both 4 and 5, this is what makes it not a function. Because the x value of 1 became two different y values. And so this thing here is not a function. Frowny face. Now don't be fooled though, because it's each x has to map to a unique y. It doesn't work both ways. So if I have repeated y values, there's not a problem. I just can't have repeated x values. So if I look at this table here, and this table causes a lot of people trouble. Um, if you don't, if you're not careful, and you don't realize that it's the x mapping to more than one y, um, that is what causes something to be a function or not a function, then you're going to make a mistake on this one. Okay, so I have my x and my y for my mapping diagram. 2, 3, and 4 are in my domain. My range is just a 4. I'm not going to write 4 three times, or else the mapping diagram doesn't work. I'm going to write 4 just once. And so I look. 2 becomes a 4, 3 becomes a 4, and 4 becomes a 4. This is a function. It's a very lame function whose rule just turns every number in the input into 4. But it totally is a function. Because 2 becomes something unique, 3 becomes something unique, and 4 comes become something unique. I don't have an arrow coming from the multiple arrows coming out of the domain. I can have every single arrow mapping into the range because this gives me the equation y equals 4 and if I look at this equation it's y equals some expression right and I'm not doing anything to the y so this totally is a function and if I graph it it's gonna pass the vertical line test because a quick sketch of this graph is gonna show I just have a series of dots lining up horizontally they pass the vertical line test this thing, however, does not, because 1 becomes a 4 and a 5, and 2 is up here at 8, and this thing right here is a violation of the vertical line test. So remember, it's, you can't have multiple y's for an x. Each x has to have one little arrow coming out of it in the mapping diagram, all right? Not the other way around. Not, you can have as many arrows as you want going to a y value, and that's what a function is.